Hi there. Welcome to this lesson on Pure Mathematics 3. We're up to Chapter 3, Trigonometric Functions. And in this lesson, we're looking at how you find exact values of trig functions when you know the exact value of one particular one. And this lesson will also include a, a reminder of how you use a cast diagram. The first example is fairly straightforward, and I'll let you have a go at it in a moment yourself. You're told that theta is an acute angle, and you're told that sine theta is 1 over root 3. We're asked to find the exact values of cos, sec, and cot theta. The easiest way to do this is to quickly sketch a right angle triangle, put in the 1, put in the root 3, and move forwards from there. I'll let you have a go yourself first. Pause the video. Come back when you're ready. Okay, so sine theta equals 1 over root 3. That's opposite over hypotenuse. So if you sketch a right angle triangle, choose one of the angles to be theta. The opposite side would be the one. The hypotenuse will be the root three. Then we can work out the third side using Pythagoras. Root three squared is three. Three minus one squared is two. So the third side will be the square root of two. Once you know all three sides, you can find absolutely anything they ask you. They ask us to find the cosine of theta, well, that's adjacent over hypotenuse. So cos theta will be root 2 divided by root 3, which you could write as 1 square root if you wanted to, square root of 2 over 3. Sec theta. Sec theta is 1 divided by cos theta, which is just 1 over our previous answer. So instead of root 2 over 3, you'll get root 3 over 2. Same fraction, but the other way up. Cot theta is 1 over tan theta. Tan theta is opposite over adjacent, so cot theta will be adjacent over opposite, which is root 2 divided by 1, which is just root 2. Okay, second example. Now, this example is a lot more complicated, and the reason for the complication is two things. They tell us that theta is obtuse. Well, you can't get an obtuse angle in a right angle triangle. And they also tell us that tan theta is minus 5 over 12. It's what you do with this minus. It means just sketching a right angle triangle doesn't work very well with this question. It just becomes highly problematic. Now, the easiest way, I think, is using various trig identities. I'll let you have a go yourself first. Don't worry if you get very confused on this, but have a go. Pause the video. Come back when you are ready. Okay, I said to use a trig identity, but the question is what trig identity do you use? They've told us that tan theta is this, and they've asked us to find sec theta. That's the first thing. So we could do an identity which includes both tan theta and sec theta. Well, there is one. One plus tan squared theta is equal to sec squared theta. So we could substitute tan theta into here, and that'll give us one plus minus five over 12 squared is equal to sec squared theta. We can tidy all of this up on the left-hand side, and we'll get 169 over 144. And then to find sec theta, we'll square root that. The square root of 169 over 144 is 13 over 12. But there is a problem. It could be plus 13 over 12, or it could be minus 13 over 12. And only one of those is correct. And the question then is, well, how do we work out which of those two values is correct? There are a few different methods, but I think that the easiest method is by using what's called a cast diagram. Now, if you've never met a cast diagram before, I'll quickly talk you through how they work. A cast diagram splits the world into four quadrants like you would do on X, Y axes with coordinate axes. And you start on the x-axis, the positive x-axis, and you head anti-clockwise. So heading anti-clockwise, you'll have zero to 90 degrees in that first quadrant. Keeping on going round, you'll have 90 to 180 degrees in the second quadrant. Keep going anti-clockwise, you'll have 180 to 270 in the third quadrant. And then if you keep going anti-clockwise, 270 to 360 in the final quadrant. So that's the first thing. Angles are measured from the x-axis, the positive x-axis, going anti-clockwise. Now, the second thing is which trig function is positive 
in each of these quadrants. So for example, between zero and 90 degrees, which trig functions are positive? Is tan positive, is sine positive, is cosine positive? And the answer to that is all of them are, all of them. And the letter A there stands for all the trig functions. They are all positive between zero and 90 degrees. Now after that, it's no longer the case that all of them are positive. Between 90 and 180 degrees, sine is positive. That's why we have the S there. So sine is positive between 90 and 180, but cosine isn't, it's negative. Tan isn't, it's negative. And at this point, we need to think about sec, cot, and cosec. Now, cosec theta is one divided by sine theta. So it works in the same way. So sine is positive, and so is cosec theta, because it's just one divided by sine. So we've only got the letter S there, but you do need to remember sine is positive, so is cosec, because it's one divided by sine. Between 180 and 270, tangent is positive. Now, if tangent is positive, so is cotangent, because cot is just one divided by tangent. Everything else is negative. Sine is negative, cosine is negative, sec is negative, cosec is negative. Between 270 and 360, cosine is positive. Now, because sec is one divided by cosine, so is sec theta. So you need to remember that. Cosine is positive there. Sec theta is positive there. Everything else will be negative. Now, that brings us back to this question. And the question is, well, how do we work out if sec is supposed to be plus or minus? And the key to this is seeing that theta is obtuse. We're told that in the question. An obtuse angle is an angle between 90 degrees and 180 degrees. So we're in this quadrant up here. Now in this quadrant, sine is positive. Uh, one over sine is cosec, so cosec is positive. But that's it, nothing else is. Everything else is negative, which means sec theta which is one over cos, that must be negative if theta is an obtuse angle between 90 and 180. So at this point, we can discard the positive value and say it can't be that. The answer for sec theta must be minus 13 divided by 12. So that's rather long, but that is how we would find sec theta. Sine theta, slightly less tricky, and you use a more obvious method for sine theta. So if we're looking at sine theta, well, tan theta is sine divided by cos. We want to find sine. We know what tan theta is because they told us in the question. Cos theta, we don't know, but we've just worked out sec theta. So it's easy to work out cos theta. First of all, rearranging that, we get sine theta equals tan theta times by cos theta. And coming to the cos theta bit, Sec theta we just worked out in the previous question, that's minus 13 over 12. Well, cos theta is 1 divided by that. So cos theta must equal minus 12 divided by 13, same fraction, but upside down. Now we can substitute both values in here. We know tan theta, they told us in the question. We know cos theta because it was easy to work out using what we'd just done. And that gives us sine theta equals minus 5 over 12 times by minus 12 over 13. The 12s cancel, the minuses cancel, and we're just left with sine theta must equal five divided by 13. And that's the end of that question. It's also the end of the lesson. If you have the textbook, turn to page 60, go to exercise 3D, question three, and questions three through to five are all on this type of question. Thank you very much for listening, and cheerio.